Hey guys, found this dresser in somebody's trash and thought, oh, what a treasure. So, not quite sure what I'm gonna do with it yet, but I sh we'll just go with it. Uh, maybe some blue, maybe some, I don't know, I suck at this so far. Well guys, as I was driving along the road today, I saw this treasure in someone's trash and I thought, oh my gosh, they're throwing that away? So I pulled over, picked it up, it's the best way to find stuff. If you're doing this from home and you're flipping furniture, you see something. I can't look at a trash pile without thinking, oh, is there something in there? Mm -hmm. Back up, look out, be fast because there might be cars coming. Load it up, have a vehicle that you can actually get it into. That helps. A friend of mine has a little car and you should see her try to stuff stuff in that trunk. Anyhow, we'll probably do something neutral with this dresser as that's what kind of goes. Um, I love color. My house is full of color. My husband makes fun of me frequently. We'll probably do some gray with some white glaze on this. So stay tuned. So first off, there's some really rough spots on the top. Just looks like normal wear and tear, you know, just some uh, scuffing here. Looks like, oh, that's probably me. Just uh, any flat surface I tend to set something on, so I had to clean this off. And as there's always something going on in this garage, uh, everything has paint on it. So right now, normally I would go with a chalk paint, but I have a, a, an accumulation of oops paints and uh, leftovers from when we built the house. So I'm going to go with some... Duration Sherwin Williams. This color is monochrome, um, same color that I have in my office. So now turn studio because it's got paint all over the floor, and that's what makes it okay is to call it a studio if the room is covered in paint. So we're going to go with this and see what happens. First, we're going to do a little sanding going to be using my Mother's Day present. This is a Ryobi belt sander. Bought at Lowe's for like $49.99. So you can't really beat that. It tends to do the job. This uh, I, I went, it's about a belt per piece of furniture. Um, I tend to get pieces that are already covered in paint. So it takes a minute to get the paint off all the way down to the wood. This is already just plain wood. There's no paint. So hopefully I can get a second piece out of this belt. First, we're going to turn it on. As I'm seeing this paint, this wood come off, I had an idea. I think I'm going to go with like a chippy beachy theme on this dresser. Um, the, the wood is coming off really nicely and chippy on the top of it. So I think what I'll do is just go ahead and paint it with the light gray. Then I'm going to sand it after that on the top and see it'll, it'll flake off some of that gray and let the wood shine through from underneath. And then once we glaze it, it'll give it just a really nice sheen and a really great look, I hope. I'm going to use my trusty flathead screwdriver, which opens most things for me doorknobs, uh, once your kids lock themselves in, you can, you know, uh, paint cans, uh, um, open up various things with this. It's a really great tool, not only used for putting in screws. Actually, I don't like it for putting in screws. Uh, Phillips is so much better. I mean, this thing just slips out all the time. And my paint cans are never hard to open because I never quite shut them all the way. Another hazard of being whatever you would call it. So, okay, note to self, do not blow in the wind. Oh, and another note, this is Texas. So the, uh, Sun is normally always shining down very, very harshly 
and I love to paint outside. It gives me a better view of what I'm doing and what I've missed. So um, wear sunblock because if and put it on before you start your project because if you come out here and you say get on your flatbed trailer where it's easier to go ahead and load things so you don't scratch them after you paint them and then load them and you forget to put on sunscreen, you get busy doing your project and next thing you know, you feel that familiar sting on your back and you're like, oh snap, I'm sunburning. Um, my skin is deteriorating and I'm getting older so I really can't afford that to happen. So sunblock first. So I paint all the time. So there's always a paintbrush or five in my, in my kitchen sink. So um, they normally always need to be cleaned when I need them. So when I'm cleaning them, you get water uh, soaked up into your brush. So you're going to want to shake that out pretty rigorously but even if you're just dipping in the sink and throwing water around in the sink not only is it going to spot up your sink trust me i know but it's going to uh, still be wet when you're when you're going to paint so uh a painter once taught me a little trick and it's easier with wooden handles than it is with this plastic so we'll see if i can do it without dropping it because my hands are wet because my dish towels are all dirty <laughs> so um you're going to want to grab it and twist it very quickly like this and it slings water in a huge fan. So you also want to get away from say your vehicles or the furniture or whatever else is your dog is around you because it will fan even some leftover paint because I always wash. I do everything in a hurry so I wash my paint brushes in a hurry so I never quite get all of the paint out which means I go through a lot of brushes. So. Um, Oh well. <laughs> so I'm going to go over here and shake this out. Okay, now we are ready to paint. You see me almost trip over that? Hazards all around. I'm also te uh, painting out in the Texas sun, so this is going to dry very quickly. So I go from one end of the dresser to the other, all the way across, so that when I'm done with like this little section here, I can go all the way from one end to the other and make one continuous brush stroke to make it a neater finish. I also like to go around on the edges first, especially the side edges, because they tend to goop uh, as you're going and you're leaving paint when you go in a brush stroke it's almost like wiping your brush off so it'll goop right there so you want to kind of keep going at that make sure it's not pooling in one area see it's already drying on this side so I need to come across and one fell swoop come back come back come back and then we'll move on to our next cross section painting fast is Good. On several different levels, you get the project finished quicker. Um, it's one more thing checked off your to-do list quicker. And that to-do list, man, it just never stops, does it? I don't care if my brush strokes are uniform because I'm going to be glazing it after. And the glaze will catch in the brush strokes and give it a more chaotic look. I like the term organized chaos because I'm okay with the chaos, so therefore I let it happen ish. So I just like the way that the look that it gives it. I'm also not getting too detailed right here because I'll do that also with the glaze. And the wood shining through will only help the look that I'm going for. Another thing you want to watch when you're painting the inside seams or whatever of this dresser is when you get into creases like this and you're coming in a downward angle with your brush, the paint is again going to wipe off in these little corners and it just doesn't look, I mean, not that that's going to be a part that you see, but it'll catch on the drawer and it takes it a longer time to dry. So we're just going to kind of wipe those up as we go. So I'm going to take my Valspar clear mixing glaze that I get at Home Depot for like $12.99. I'm sorry, Lowe's. I frequent both of them. It depends on who I have a coupon for. 
So got my clear mixing glaze and you can mix it in a solo cup because they are easy to toss. Um, I'm sure I could be more green, but I do recycle my water bottles, so I figure it evens out. So anyhow, we're going to mix this. I like to shake it up. I don't think there's any reason to really shake it up. I just am in the habit of doing that with all of my paints. So, you know, it's hard to break those, those habits, good or bad. All right, dirty paintbrush. And I should probably go wash that out, but we're gonna wait for a minute. Um, we're still gonna go ahead and use it. All right, we're going to, you don't, you don't need very much of this stuff because a little does go a long way, but you need three parts of this to one part of your paint, depending on where you're going. I eyeball it. Sometimes it's a little watery, so you'd have to add a little more paint. Sometimes it's a little thick, so you need to add more glaze. Sometimes, depending on what, what you want your piece of furniture to look like, you can make it a little thicker and it, it goes on a little bit more like paint but still wipes off so you can see the undertones of whatever your first color was. I'm gonna go for a happy medium and do about half and half. And we'll see what that looks like. So that covers the, the base of this cup about an inch. And then I haven't quite picked the color. I think I have enough of that. All right, again, with the trusty screwdriver. I decided against white because I've done that a lot. And I don't know, you get tired of painting the same thing over and over again. So we're gonna go with this chalky, uh, it's like a robin's egg. Trousseau Blue from Lowe's. Again, it's like $32 ish including tax so i like this paint it goes on easy very i mean it'll need a second coat because it's a lighter color but uh it's really it goes on very smooth i, I just really like their chalky finishes and they're cheap so again i don't have a brush so another good thing this is for is to stir paint so again with the half and half we're just going to pour about that much in there give it a little wipe Give it some stir. You can kind of judge on the consistency. That's that's a little bit thick, so we're gonna ooh, go back with that. That's about perfect. So I'm gonna have to go in, clean this brush, grab another brush, and a wet rag. So in order to complete this job, you will need your mixed paint with your glaze and then a wet rag to wipe off the glaze and of course a brush to put the glaze on, but not one that already has paint on it. So, see you in a sec. Okay, again, I have a wet brush, so I'm gonna have to go out here in the yard and do the little twirl, but uh, this is an angled brush. The other brush I was using was a wider flat brush and it's good for uh, covering lots of surface in a shorter amount of time. This is good to get in like the little scroll marks on the side of the dresser with the glaze. It's this tip just kind of works its way in there and I'm, I prefer this. It, it, it's really good for um, getting into creases and corners and around decorative woodworking on any piece. safety goggles or something I usually wear my sunglasses in fact those of you who know me this is what I look like without my sunglasses on I kicked them off when I was washing out that paintbrush and not really sure where I set them in between here and the kitchen sink so we'll go back in a minute and see if we can find those but uh, for right now we're just not gonna worry about it. we're just gonna squint don't suggest it but that's what I'm doing right now you can also use a different sander this is kind of heavy-duty for what I'm doing right now I have a palm sander it's actually a lot easier to use than this, but it's wrapped up in the drawer and I don't feel like jumping over concrete bags to get to it. So we're just gonna use this one because it's out. And it has a sanding belt on it that 
has been used but is still doing the job so <laughs> So, let's get this switched around. Also, if you have on chapstick, that stuff will get in your mouth. So this dresser has drawers, and we're going to do the same thing to the drawers that we did to the dresser. We're going to paint them gray, distress them, and then uh, brush them off. <laughs> All right, got my trusty goggles on, AKA sunglasses, and we're gonna get to sanding these drawers. Okay, those are pretty well distressed. Um, one thing I noticed as I was going, for one, I changed my mind on it. I was just gonna go across it, but then I accidentally went a little bit too far on one side, and then I decided that I did like the outline of the sandpapering, uh, bringing this wood through on this outline, because once it goes in the drawers, these drawers are really, really kind of plain, so it's gonna give them a more uh, standout decorative appearance when you're looking at the dresser as a whole, uh, due to that wood outline on the edge of the drawers. And these drawers here, smaller drawers that go to the top, they're, uh, rounded here so when you're bringing that belt or any any sander really when you're bringing it across this line right here is going straight across that is not the look I was going for so I kind of brought it up as at an angle here you can see this part is a little bit better than this part so I'm actually going to go over this right here this is the only part I see that's that's really like that so I'm just going to kind of come up at an angle to hide that straight line across that curved edge but you can see it kind of took out that straight line here and gave it kind of a little more mottled, uh, sanded look. Organized chaos. That's what we're going for. Organized. Chaos just by itself is not as much fun. Organized a little bit, you know. It's all right. Okay, we're going to wipe these clean with my personalized brush. Any grooves, you can just kind of get down in there with those. Get a really, this is not a stiff brush. I mean, it's pretty soft. It doesn't scratch anything. I can pretty much go over every surface. And if it gets dusty, you just give it a good knock on something. It, you know, you can also take out a little frustration. You know, if your kids come out and want you to get them another freaking snack, just clean out your brush. You'll feel a lot better. This is just a regular old washcloth. Um, it's really kind of close to making it into the trash because I've wiped up so much stain with it and that doesn't really wipe out. So I'm going to be using the corners and you don't want something just extremely absorbable, abs absorb, uh, whatever I'm trying to say there. You don't want it to soak up that glaze. You want it to kind of smear it. That's for you, Amy. Smear. <laughs> on to the dresser. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe that side. We're not rinsing this out. We're just gonna use the same rag for the whole time without rinsing anything out. I'm kind of outlining where I've sanded the wood down and it's going to shine through along with the gray underneath and then the blue on top. going to 
create some lines, your glazes. So you're gonna wanna get your rag and come up heavy, light at the bottom, lighter as you go up until your hand just kind of disappears away from the dresser to leave it kind of with that poof, the brush strokes are gone look. You don't have to have full coverage on this. Just kind of dump it where you think uh, you're gonna like the look of it. just enough what so today because this is what I have in stock huh? I'm doing a video <laughs> my daughter just came out and said huh I'm using polyacrylic sometimes I use polyurethane it kind of depends on what I have on hand I kind of like this because it's water based but I don't know that it's as durable as the um, urethane is because it's got I don't know just a heavier you have to take it off with paint thinner and it doesn't do well on your skin. This is much better for your skin or it's much better for mine seems to be. So polyacrylic you can also get this from, I got this from Lowe's. Um, so water base is a lot easier to clean up so we're going to give that a top coat on this furniture. that's it we're uh, gonna let that dry now it'll take about two minutes um, really you want to let it cure good before you take it to the store but again I don't know people tell you you should do stuff it just doesn't happen that way so we're gonna go ahead and list it on marketplace take it up to my store and uh, get rid of it and move on to the next project so I wish I had a cute goodbye line but I don't so she has me! I have my daughter in her pajamas at 11.30 on a Friday afternoon. Yeah. But summer is here and, you know. Be lazy. <laughs> right. Be lazy.